Choosing Love by Ginny Rules 27. Chapter 32. While Ryan and Ben were having their time with their sisters, Mal smiled as she enjoyed some one-on-one -on -one time with her dad. Such time was rarer than sun on the isle, now that she was an Oridon, and it would always be treasured. You know you can't always duck over to the isle whenever you want, right, Mal? Hades asked as he started to whip up some of his garlic crispy chicken for her. He didn't need the Olympian mind link to know that's what she wanted. At some point, he'd have to talk to Beastie Jr. about possibly getting a delivery service set up, so that Mal could have his cooking over there in Oridon. But for right now, he'd savour the moments he got with his daughter. She certainly seemed happier than the first time he saw her, after all that handler nonsense got resolved. All he would say is that that Natalie woman was lucky it had been Steph in Oridon and not him. She'd have gotten a lot more done to her than just an inability to grow plants, that was for sure. Dad! Whoa, Molly! What happened? Hades asked as Mal rushed into his arms. Without thinking, he wrapped her up in a hug and frowned as it almost felt as if Mal's shoulders were shaking, almost as if she was crying. But Mal didn't cry. The only exception to that rule was obviously near-death experiences, but Hades didn't think Mal had had any of those over in Boridon. After all, all the villains were on the aisle. His eyes looked over to the other companions who had rushed in with Mal, lingering on the newbie. Explain, he growled, glaring at the new boy. Jay and Harry wouldn't have made Mal cry, and Uma would have killed anyone who even thought about it. That just left him. It's not Ben's fault, Uncle Hoodies, Uma said immediately, as if to bring attention away from the guy. I thought we weren't going by that when we were on the aisle. Ben asked, and Hades paused. Ben. Ben... Wait, wasn't Mal dating a Ben? You wouldn't happen to be King Ben, would you? Hades asked, his voice still dangerously low. After all, Ben was a fairly common name, and it was more than likely parents started naming their own brats after the prince upon his birth. Yes, Lord Hades. Ben nodded, and Hades had to give the little sons more credit. He wasn't melting into a puddle of goo the way most mortals would at seeing an angered lord of the underworld. Then again, Beastie Jr. did have the advantage of the fact that Mal was still in his arms. Hades would never want to risk hurting Mal, no matter what happened. Then maybe you, or one of Mal's minions here, could explain why my daughter is currently crying in my arms? Why does he insist on calling us her minions? Harry muttered, because that's what we are in our way. We'd do anything for Mal and you know it. Jay chuckled, aye, Jay, but the difference is this. Mal would also do anything for us. Hades shook his head, I'm growing ancient hair. On that note, where was Persephone? She had gone to Oridon at King Ben's invitation, but he knew there was no way she'd let their daughter just go back to the Isle without her or without their son. If Zeus had done something because she wasn't on her six months in Oridon, heads were going to roll. You are already ancient, Uncle Hades. Boomer stated, but then sighed as she started explaining everything that had happened. By the end of it, Hades had a pretty good list of all the tortures this Natalie would face once her soul came to him to be judged. Persephone may have handled her punishment in life, but death was his playground. Hi, hi, Molly. It's okay, Hades said soothingly, gently rubbing Mal's back and ignoring Ben's wide-eyed stare of astonishment. He figured it probably was a strange sight, the big bad Lord of the Dead being gentle. But Hades didn't really care right now. All he knew was that he had an upset daughter and he would do anything to make it so she wasn't upset anymore. Hey, do you want some garlic crispy chicken? And I'll fill you in on everything that's been happening here. Mal looked up, gave him a weak smile. A smile that Hades readily returned, 
as the group made their way to the kitchen and Hades learnt everything that was going on. Let's just say he was fairly impressed that the Cerberus in Immortal's body his daughter was dating didn't hightail it out of there the moment Hades had started shouting. How have you been? Hades asked. Ever since that first encounter, he had grown to tolerate Beastie Jr. If anything, he was good around a Virgil, the old boy having been in the kitchen their first trip. Most people would have easily gotten annoyed by the half in stammer, but Ben seemed to take it in good stride. I've been good, Mal told him, as she shook her head. Ben's been insane about making sure I don't have too much stuff on my plate after everything that happened with Natalie. Akio and Amir have practically become my shadows, which is annoying because I've actually started liking some of the cotillion stuff. Not the prissy dress stuff, but working with Jane to make sure the colours don't clash. It's actually using my art abilities, and it's kind of fun. Have you told them that? Of course I have! Mal chuckled, but they don't do it often, only if they think I looked overworked. And nine times out of ten, it's just a quick break to the tawny field to throw toys for Estelle. We went to the Enchanted Lake once, but I think they picked up on the hint that water and me don't mix when I refuse to get in. You know, I'm sure Ariel would be happy to. Yeah, I'm sure too. And I'm also sure that Poseidon would also be happy to give me swimming lessons. Mal shrugged. All the same, I'm fine on the land. Uma and Harry are the swimmers, after all. Hades nodded and plated the chicken for Mal, ignoring her mention of his little brother. He might not have been on Hades' dead-to-him list, but he still wasn't thrilled that Poseidon hadn't attempted to help when Persephone went to Zeus all those years ago. Speaking of brothers... How's your brother doing? He never seems to come on these clandestine trips of yours. You two aren't in a fight or anything, are you? Mouse shook her head as she dug into her chicken. No, nothing like that. Nine times out of ten, we don't even plan these trips, so there's no time to grab Hetty. Besides, he's usually with Alexandria anyway. Who? Oh? Alexandria Charming, the youngest daughter of Kit and Ella. Oh, one of the daughters that caused Tremaine to have a snit for a month after we heard the news? Hades nodded. Lady Tremaine wasn't... Oh, wait, what am I saying? Of course she wasn't happy to hear that Cinderella had healthy children. Ma sighed, shaking her head. That would be an understatement, Molly. Hades chuckled. Furious would be more accurate. Furious? That Cinderella had healthy kids? Apparently, since Queen Ella used to be a scullery maid, having healthy kids was above her station. Hades rolled his eyes. Never mind the fact that Cinderella's father was a lord when he died, meaning having healthy kids would be perfectly within her station. But the woman's insane anyway. Uh, Tremaine, I mean, not Cinderella. I knew who you meant, Dad. Mal chuckled as she continued to eat her chicken, cleaning her plate and sitting back with a sigh. Gods, I know Oridon has some good food, but there's nothing that could beat your chicken. Flattery will get you everywhere, Molly. Hades smirked as he held up a Tupperware container of garlic crispy chicken. There's enough in there for both you and your brother, since this is Hattie's favourite too. I can't believe I have to say this, but share with your brother. Dad, I'm 16, not 6. Actually, she should have to check to see how far off her birthday was. It'd be weird, celebrating in Oridon instead of the Isle for the first time in her life. But it'd also be the first birthday she'd get to celebrate with Ben. She'd have to put her foot down to avoid him from spoiling her too much. Yeah, well, separating my chicken from you is like taking a bone from Cerberus, Hades teased, as he put the Tupperware container in a small bag. How much time did I tell you to give them again? Half an hour, Mal sighed. I can't believe I didn't know Ryan had a sister. How can I call myself a captain if I don't know what's going on in my crew's life? Mal, people keep secrets, Hades said gently. I mean, for example, I thought everything was going fine in my daughter's life, even though she just turned her birth giver into a lizard at the same event where her boyfriend becomes the king of Oridon, and then one day she mutes her mental link, and her mother and I were forced to speculate until her cousin finally reached out. How long are you going to play that card? 
Oh, as long as I'm able to. Mal shook her head. I told you guys. I didn't want to marry Mum. You know, since she was trapped on the aisle? I didn't think Ben would just invite her off for me. How long have you been dating the sunspot? Why? Hades chuckled. Because, Molly, it's clear to anyone with eyes that he'd do anything for you. If you told him you wanted your mum, he'd get you your mum. He told me he loved me, Mal said softly, and Hades stiffened slightly. Not expecting that turn in the conversation. After the mess with Natalie, I mean. Well, actually, he told Natalie first, but I was just in the room. Okay, I'm going to need an explanation now. Ben said he wasn't going to stand for her treatment of me. And that my aisle clothes and my spray painting were what made me the girl he loved. Mal said with a small smile. I didn't tell him back, but... I do love him, Dad. You and Mum made it so Hattie and I know what love feels like. Even being on the aisle. Look at what your relationship is with Mum. That's what I want. Minus the having to lead each other for six months. And you'll get it, Molly. Hades said gently. Did he want to be having this conversation with his daughter? Not necessarily. Since, in his mind, she was still the five-month-old baby Maleficent had stolen from him. Thanks to the dragon, he was robbed with five precious years of his daughter. Years that had caused her to grow up too fast. But... Ben made her happy. He allowed her the chance to see the sun and would do anything for her. At some point, Hades knew Ben was probably going to come and ask a question every father dreaded. He also knew there was only one answer he could give. You should go get them, Hades said softly as he looked up at the time. Any longer and they risk getting stuck in there. I know, Mel sighed, but... I don't want to take them out too soon either. I know Ryan's got Henry and Derek looking out for him. But at the same time, I'm still his co-captain. I want to make sure he's taken care of. That he... That he won't end up hurting himself in his grief. And then there's Ben. He's never even gotten the chance to talk to his sister before. I know, Molly. Hades nodded. But if you leave them in there for too long and they'll become part of the underworld. There's a reason why mortals aren't allowed in here unless they're dead, after all. What about Icarus and Abu? Mal asked, referring to the two mortals Hades and Jafar had kidnapped in their brief team up to take down Aladdin and Hercules. I'm convinced that kid was secretly immortal. No one survives flying that close to the sun, and the less I say about that monkey, the happier we'll all be. Mal nodded and quickly got up to give Hades a hug. Hey, hey, none of that. Hades said gently, though he returned the hug and gently kissed the top of her head. With all the back and forth you all do, something tells me this won't be the last time I see you. I promise, Dad. Next time I see you, I'll bring Hattie. Mal told him before ducking down the hall to get the two boys, the bag with the Tupperware clenched firmly in her hand. Hades smiled and nodded as he started to clean up. He had no doubt that what Mal said was true. Meanwhile, across the bridge in Oridon, a tall, dark-haired boy smirked as he strolled across the quad at Oridon Prep. It honestly was like he was invisible, with no one even looking twice at him in his aisle garb. Then again, with all the VKs already here, it was likely that the denizens of Oridon were used to people walking around in leather and other aisle clothing. Honestly, all the royals here, and there's no security. Freddy thought with a scoff, as a few boys ran past him. That stampede had worked out better than he had thought. He originally thought he was just going to pin the mess on that rat in training he had been talking to. But to have her get crushed in the mass herself? And God, Ryan's reaction. He couldn't have predicted that if he had tried. But, as they say, God works in mysterious ways. Ryan's reaction had driven Henry from the barge and completely monopolised the attention of the others. 
even removing three of the six rats from the cleanup crew, allowing Freddy the chance to sneak on board and make his way to Borodon. However, now he knew he'd need a disguise and quick. Jay, Hook and Uma were somewhere, not to mention Mao. If there were four people who Freddy knew would ruin his plans, it was them. He knew Blueberry would probably keep to herself after the whole fiasco at the coronation, so she wouldn't raise a fuss. And Deville was still too timid to fight back. Gil would always be an idiot if Freddy's experience with the boys' older brothers, and even his older sister Lachlan taught him anything. Even if Lachlan was one of his angels. He could handle those three, but he did not want to meet the rotten four. Oh, they would meet. But when Freddy was ready for them to. But until then, he wasn't about to have them chuck him back onto the aisle. Claudine can handle the angels for a while, until I can get them off the aisle, he thought. After all, what was the point in getting her out of her shell if she can't run the gang? Then again, she can barely get a boy to break his no flings vow. So maybe I should have made Strat the second in command like I promised when I stole him from the rats. Uma didn't know a good thing when she had it, and stuck with Hook, the worthless pirate whose own father didn't want him. Ducking into the school, Freddy opened the door to the first dorm he found, blinking at the spotless interior, staring back at him. Okay, is this a person or a puppet? Freddy muttered as he walked inside, closing the door behind him. God, there is a reason why we call this place Borodon if this is how they live. There's not a speck of dust out of place, is there? Pausing at the bedside table, Freddy smirked as he looked at a picture that was in front and centre. Oh, this was too perfect. Not only had he wound up in a Borodon Royals room, but it was Mal's Borodon Royals room. Well then, this'll teach King Beastie Jr. not to have a decent security around his room, Freddy smirked. I wonder if he has a change of clothes I could borrow. After all, it's the least he can do, considering his father's the reason why we were all trapped on that aisle. Opening the wardrobe, Freddy began poring through the collection of suits Ben had available, quickly passing on the blue suits. And pondering how many blue suits a guy could really need, Freddy spotted a light grey one. It was dark enough that it would still be him, but light enough that anyone in Borodon wouldn't stop him and ask him what he was doing there. He put it on, frowning slightly, as he saw that the pants were a bit too short in the ankle. But there was no time to fix that. If anything, the imbeciles in Oridon might just think he had recently had a growth spurt. There was no way they'd think that he was someone from the Isle. And if they did, well then, they'd just be considered paranoid, really. Even if they'd be right. Now then, what do the Borodon boys do for fun? He muttered as he straightened the tie before making his way back to the quad. He wasn't going to lie. He wasn't used to how bright the sun was. It honestly made it hard to see where he was going so he could be forgiven for bumping into someone. Excuse me? Oh, God, I think they heard her back on the aisle. There was no need to be so ear-piercingly loud, Freddy thought as he turned to look at the girl. She was the stereotype of a Borodon brat, clad in all pink and had a posse of hangers on by her side. Her brown hair was tied up in a ponytail as if she'd been born with it in that style. But Freddy wasn't the head of the angels for just his good looks. Giving the girl his best smile, he gave a small bow. Pardon me, mademoiselle. I was blinded by your beauty. Uh, surely someone as angelic as yourself was brought here by the grace of God himself. The girl smiled as her posse giggled. Finally! Someone around her who knows how to treat a princess. She shook her head and held out her hand. Now you, your highness, are no mere princess, Freddy said, gently taking her hand and chastely kissing her knuckles. Such an action disgusted him to his core, but he knew it was the only way to avoid being discovered. 
After all, if Jay or Hook heard about a dark-haired boy kissing a princess's hand, they wouldn't think anything of it. Have you heard the saying that flattery will get you nowhere? Or will it get me your name? Oh, he is smooth. One of the princess's friends giggled. Smoother than Ben ever was. Cut your losses and get with this one. Hush! The princess snapped before turning back and smiling at Freddy. The name's Audrey. Princess Audrey. Well then, Princess Audrey. Should you ever be in need of someone to accompany you to an event, allow me to be of service. Freddy said with another sweeping bow. The name's Frederick. He may have hated his first full name, but in times like this, it came in handy. The angels only ever referred to him as Fred. And of course, Mal and her ilk gave him that disgusting nickname of Freddy. If they heard the name Frederick, they'd have no clue they were the same person. Which was just what Freddy was counting on. Well, Frederick, maybe I'll see you at Cotillion. Audrey said with a small smile. I have a spa appointment beforehand, of course, but I should be there. And where would this cotillion be, if I were to meet you there? Freddy asked. A big event like that would be the perfect place to enact his revenge against Mal and her gang. Without any of the rats for backup, they'd be sitting ducks. It's in the same place every year, another one of Audrey's hangers-on said. It's the royal yacht in the harbour. Oh, that'll work perfectly. Freddy smirked at the memory of Mal floundering in the cove when she was nine and he was twelve came to the forefront of his mind. He could still hear her shouting for Uma to come and help. There'd be no stupid dog this time to hold her up. No hook to dive to her rescue. Well, your highness, until we meet again, Freddy said and gently kissed her knuckles once more. In all honesty, he had no intention of ever seeing that girl again. All she was, was a spoiled Borodon brat, who didn't know how good she had it compared to the others. But she did provide him with the information he needed to get his revenge. Now, where could he make a smoke bomb? Hook was certainly going to recognise him by this cotillion, and there was a likelihood of a sword fight against the son of Hook, since Jay would be more than likely holding back Mal and Uma. Time for that rat to be hoisted up on his own petard. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Okay, tonal shift. Oh boy. But I like how Hades is um, being accepting of Ben. Like, he doesn't want to like him. Because remember, that's the son of the guy who got them all locked up there. And his daughter's boyfriend who didn't know that she was being abused. But he still likes Ben because of the effort Ben's putting in. And... The fact that Ben doesn't run away, showing fortitude. I appreciate that. And also, oh boy, Freddy and Audrey. Keep an eye on those two, okay? Keep an eye. Wow. So yeah, Ginny, I agree with what you said the very first time you commented. That scene, oh boy. Anyway, yeah, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, and I do whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, cows and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.